the Altmore 12 year old Foggy Moss Speyside Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. When we review whiskeys, we tend to talk a lot about the aromas, the flavors, the development, you know, on the entry and the mid palate and the finish. But there is a characteristic about this whiskey that really makes it stand out, I think, from a lot of its peers. And I'll tell you what it is after I tell you about the history of Altmar Distillery and the profile of this whiskey. The Altmore Distillery is located near the Speyside town of Keith. The name is derived from Altmore, the water source for the distillery, and this translates as Big Burn from the Gaelic. The area where the distillery was built is known as Foggy Moss due to the boggy terrain and regular mist that is created by the microclimate. In 1895, the Altmore Distillery was founded by Alexander Edward Altmore, who was then owner of the Van Rennes Distillery. In 1899, the distillery was owned by the Pattisons, which went bankrupt in that year. Production plummeted and the distillery was closed. In 1904, Altmore Distillery was reopened. In 1917, Altmar Distillery was closed again during World War I due to barley shortages. In 1923, after World War I, Altmar was sold to John Dewar & Sons. In 1925, Altmar Distillery was bought by the Distillers Company Limited. In 1930, Altmar Distillery was bought by Scottish Malt Distillers. In 1968, Altmar Distillery's malting floors were closed. In 1970, Altmore Distillery was rebuilt and expanded. A new spirit still and wash still were placed in addition to the two stills that were already present. In 1971, Altmore Distillery was reopened. In 1998, Altmore Distillery was sold back to Bacardi subsidiary Dewars, which had previously owned Altmore between 1923 and 1925. In 2004, Altmore Distillery produced their first official bottling, a 12-year-old, after an earlier flora and fauna release and an earlier rare malt release. The Altmore 12-year-old Foggy Moss Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey was aged for 12 years in ex-bourbon cask. This natural color is non-show filtered, it's bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, and sells for about $73. Man, this is a whiskey on the nose. I, you could s spend days on it. But before I get into that, first I want to tell you something that is really cool. They put a seal on the bottle like other distilleries do, but they also put a label on here with a numbering on it that lets you know that when you open this up, you break that seal and you cut through that tape, that you are getting a whiskey that came from the distillery. Uh, fakes in the industry is a growing problem. Um, so if you're buying whiskeys at auction, you could get bit buying a whiskey from auction or uh, from the secondhand market. So producers, and this is happening in the high-end wine industry as well, need to come up a way in which, hey, there's an extra seal of authenticity for the whiskeys and they're doing that. They're putting it right on the bottle. Alrighty, so on the nose, apple and pear, but also citrus, a little bit of a maltiness, a nice floral note, some vanilla, baking spices, and those are common characteristics of a lot of whiskeys, particularly with this you know type of casking. On the palate. It really has a lot going on there in the range. There is a sort of tart sour character to it. There is just a hint of bitterness, sort of like the way the peel of a fruit. Like if you eat a, an apple and you just pay attention to biting into the skin of an apple or a peach or something like that, it has like that sort of um, a bitter fruit character of, of uh, a fruit peel. And then there is a creamy character to it. So it's got sweetness, it's got floral notes, it's got 
just a hint of bitterness, a little bit of a tartness there, and it's both got the sweet and sour going on there. I really, really, really like that. It's got a lot going on in the transition, but all the aromas and flavors are delicate and graceful. This is not a whiskey that smacks you up it's alongside the head. It's not like a big sherry bomb or a big, you know, peat monster or something like that. It's a delicate, elegant, graceful whiskey. And what is really seductive about it, while it's got all these great aromas and flavors going on, is the mouthfeel. It has a nice viscosity to it and sort of a creamy texture. I don't mean creamy in terms of like being like a dairy product, but it's a silkiness, not smoothness that can come from a whiskey being too watery. Some people think a whiskey is smooth and really no, it's just thin and watery, but it is sort of a slightly thicker, viscous mouth coating feel to it. And that's because it's unchill filtered. And it has all these elements to it that have a counterbalance. Sweet and sour. Sort of a, and the, some people might take bitter as a, as a bad note, it's not. There's a bitter and there's sort of a, an herbal, it's not quite salty, but sort of an herbal character to it. And then there's a floral note to it and a slight heathery note to it. So it has these elements that are sort of playing off each other and you don't get them all at once, you get them one at a time and they're sort of bouncing back and forth between one and the other. And all the while, and going across your palate, it has sort of a slightly thicker, um, oily almost mouthfeel. And it has a medium to medium plus length finish. It has a good length finish. But it's not, as I said before, it's not a big smack upside the head. This is a whiskey in which it sort of needs you to pay attention to it, to notice all the nuances and differences uh, in the flavor. It is really, really, really well done, uh, well-crafted uh, well uh, whiskey. This is a really, really nice whiskey. Uh, I'm gonna give it a solid 90 points. Part of me feels like, hey man, Eric, are you going a little too high on this? I, I, you know, are you stretching on that one? And I start thinking about, okay, what would it take to go higher? I would want a little bit more kapow. Yes, I like bigger, bolder flavors. Probably get a little more kapow in the strength of the flavor, um, or maybe a little bit more um, depth of flavor in the in the mouthfeel, right? So that keeps me going from uh, above 90, but it, what gets me to 90 is the counterbalance uh in in the in the flavors and the sort of um almost like a seductive mouthfeel to it it's just a really 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 uh fantastic whiskey all righty uh, that's it for this review if you like watching my videos you're not yet subscribed subscribe and ring the bell uh, to be notified when i go live or uh post a new video and until next time salon hey don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos